Hello and welcome again to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. I'm not too sure which episode this is going to be, uh, and we're not actually going to work on on a car today because just like you, I gotta wait for parts. All right. While I'm waiting for parts, so I've, I've got some frame rails that are being fabricated by Art Morrison Enterprises. They should be done next week. Uh, shout out to them. Thank you very much for being able to, uh, to take my quick drawings and, and turn them into a, a thing that I'll, uh, I'll be able to fit up into the car. I've got all the other parts uh, to rebuild the uh, front suspension here and, and do it properly, I hope. I mean, we don't know. We're, we're, still, uh, we're still playing with the engineering part. Uh, but I've got all that out for laser cutting right now. It's going to come in uh, at the end of next week. So I find myself once again in the unenviable position of being a bit stuck, and I got a weekend. Uh, I don't I don't often get full weekends. I got full weekend this weekend, uh, but what I do have, and you've probably noticed, is a really bad lighting. Now I got the furnace on today. It's a little bit chilly out here, uh, so I'm gonna wind the furnace up. I'm gonna try not to freeze to death. Uh, I did a little bit of purchasing. We all are familiar with the smile at Amazon. And I've got myself some LED lights. So we're gonna put in, in place of the existing uh, fluorescent tubes and other things here in the garage, we're gonna see if this LED thing really works. Now it's a, it's not an inexpensive conversion, uh, but as I'm working around here, the shadows and stuff that I get that are being cast by the lack of, of good light overhead are, absolutely horrendous and there is a dark side of the car now it's a bright sunny day here i've got windows in the door windows over here on the side and there's little pop slotty lights at the garage doors that really need to be cleaned but it's cold enough out there we're not doing that one today and uh it's still really dark in here it's always dark in here so I, i've tried over the years uh to uh, handle this poorly of course so I've done some crazy things. Uh, I'm gonna stop this. So let's just take a quick look at what we have for uh, lights in the garage. I've now got the mic on, so hopefully you can hear me over the fan. Actually, if we go back here to the back of the garage, it won't be too bad. Okay, so looking up. We've got the traditional eight foot bank. I've got four bulbs in that bank. Uh, I actually inherited these from a good friend of mine. and. Uh, They've worked wonderfully. They were free. <laughs> that's the right price for me most of the time. Again, don't don't look at the stuff that's up there. I have another bank over here that's half obscured by wood, <laughs> four by things I don't even recognize. It's like, hey, I didn't know I had that. Cool. Oh, I put skylights in. You can see I've been fighting this for years. Put skylights in, and then I put junk in front of the skylights, and oh yeah, my neighbor's tree which you can't really see because it's going over voltage there, but it keeps trying to fall on my garage. Over the bench, I've just used the uh, traditional shop lights. The, the, there's the plugging in -y part right here. So we have those switched. Don't buy the wrong color temperature. Bulbs, oops. Okay, so that, that's not helping. Another nice skylight, you can see bright, shiny day out there, and it's still like a cave in here. Uh, over the toolbox, I installed another one of the shop light switchy deals. Um, the, this side of the car tends to be really dark. The saw and stuff is over here, so I'm going to put another bank of lights in here. And then, uh, hilarity of all hilarities, uh, I installed that little uh, work light. I just, you know, stuck it onto a 2x2 two two and I screwed the 2x2 two two into the rafters and then I just have it on a plug. Uh, I swear I, I can do better. <laughs> so all of this is going to come out. Not, I mean, we're going to change over the nature of the, the lights. It's going to be a two-day job probably. I'm going to pull that light out of there. You can see the dark depths of despair here in certain areas. Uh, the camera is, is going to be helping out, but it really isn't all that bright. Uh, I thought it would be useful to have a before and after, because when I, I asked some of the, uh, the forum guys about it, I said, okay, is it, uh, is it a little better uh, when you put, when, you know, for they, those that have put the LEDs in, or was it wow? 
And that's what I wanted to know because I've now committed to, uh, well, about 500 Canadian dollars just to switch over the lights in this shop. Don't don't kid yourself. At this point, they're still not free. Uh, so let's see if this actually made a big difference. I'm not going to uh, video a whole bunch of me actually doing it. Um, because I, I think that's going to be just stuff getting in my way and be a bit pointless. Um, but we'll even be reusing. This is a this is a fixture I, I was pretty sure I had, and there I found it. And it's got a blown ballast. Well, the LED stuff doesn't require a ballast, so uh, it's going to be nice. These this was on sale at the Home Depot. Um, it's got a convenience outlet. And it reliably starts at zero degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that might be. I'm in Canada. I have no idea what this is, uh, Fahr like Fahrenheit. Why don't you guys base your uh, temperatures on the freezing points or state changes of water? It would be, <laughs> it'd be a good start. Anyway, so I, I have no idea what that. I, I guess that might be cold or something. Who knows? Um, it was 62 bucks, even though they uh, had it listed for. 67 or 69 or something as usual their online pricing was different from their in-store pricing it was a hilarious conversation uh, but i got it for the 62 bucks uh, i will not be taken by the home despot okay so we're good we'll get these things installed uh, and i won't be doing the video I, I might do some stop motion of that just for giggles but uh I won't be doing the video the rest of it because half the time i'm gonna have to be standing on stuff and um no one needs to witness my death if I come to a crash. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for stopping by. Let's get this done, and we'll see if it really is a wow factor, or if it's just an oh hum, and I shouldn't have wasted my money. Okay. Oh, the mic is good enough to pick this up. Here. We're continuing on with the... Ah, uh, it's good. It always takes that one the longest to warm up. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue on with the uh, LED garage light swap today. <clears throat> so the lights over the bench are, are going to go, but uh, I thought I'd introduce a, a little bit of science into this, actually, to make it all uh, fair and objective. So what I have here is an old school light meter. Uh, I've got it on the global, so it's on the diffuser at the top, the little cosine receptor there and we'll measure the light the lamps have had oh well, I've had a few minutes here to warm up as I've grabbed the camera and set a few things up so they're still a little cold but they're uh, they're going to be somewhere in the ballpark so let's just have a quick look here actually we'll just reset everything to make it safe what I was getting before was a nice consistent 13 underneath the bench at about uh, eye height, let's call it that. Uh, if we move over here <laughs> to where I normally work, uh, yeah, that won't even register on that scale. So we uh, we flip over to this scale. So around the suspension here, I'm getting about ten and a quarter there. If I go back here to where the eight footers are. We can get, uh, uh, no, it's not going to register on that scale. Get a little bit more light. We get a nice 11. So I'm going to remember these numbers. So 10 and a quarter at the welding bench, 11 there, 13 over the bench. And over here in the darkest, dingiest corner of the garage, we can get. Oh, just barely ten and a quarter. In fact, if I release, it gives me just a nice solid ten. It rounds her down <laughs> to a ten. Okay, so that's our start point. Um, I'm, uh, I was just going to uh, switch over the rest of these lights. We'll pull the ballast off. We'll show you how all that works. And I'm still waiting for deliveries, but when we get all the lights in, we'll, uh, we'll remeasure this test and see how we go. Okay, here we go with this fixture. Uh, <laughs> I got my instructions, right? Came from the bulbs. Uh, I've got my cheapy shop fixture here. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the bulbs uh, out of it. Really no reason to have the ballast still in there. And I have several of these 
uh, where the ballasts are making rather a lot of noise so I'm just going to uh, prevent work later. I'm going to try to just do it once instead of doing it many times. Which as you'll know, is, uh, or at least you're getting to know, is, is really not like me. Uh, if there's a good way to make work, boy, I'm usually all over that. Uh, I have taken the liberty actually, and, and this is going to change the all the scientists out there. Uh, sorry guys, but I'm going to ruin your day. I've taken the liberty of actually wiping some of the dust and dirt off of these. <laughs> and that will impact the, uh, the amount of light that they'll put out for sure. Okay, so here we got our first little conundrum. I knew this was in here because I've taken these apart before. Uh, you can see that that ballast is looking, it's looking a little sweaty here. Um, it's getting covered a bit with schmutz of some sort. But if we, uh, if we actually look at the instructions, I don't know how clear those are, uh, but whenever we see instructions, sometimes you got to take them uh, with a grain of salt. Now, when I did this, uh, this one yesterday, the one that I put up in the ceiling here, I'm not going to move the camera and give you motion sickness. Um, it looked pretty much like this. There was a load coming in, a neutral coming in uh, to these things here, to the ballast. There were blues and reds going to one side. There's yellows going to the other side. So it seemed pretty simple just to take the, you know, there's the neutral, here's the load, and just take them and wire them up like that. It was easy peasy, uh, never had a problem. The first time I, I looked inside of one of these, I kind of went, oh, this doesn't look anything like this in terms of follow the wire. So we're just going to have to use our brain with this and understand what's going on. So these are a two-sided bulb. A lot of the bulbs that you're going to get on Amazon are going to work with or without a ballast, uh, which means they're two-sided. Some of the earlier ones only had power going to one side of the bulb, uh, in which case you needed both the load and the neutral going to one side of the bulb. And I'm not an electrician, and if you don't feel confident doing this, uh, put down the screwdriver and back slowly away. Go find somebody qualified. Uh, at one time when I was having some electrical inspected here in the garage and I asked if I needed an electrician to do it, the uh, inspector said, can you put white to white and black to black? And I said, yes, sir. And I passed my inspection with flying colors. Uh, so it's just simple rules. If it gets complicated to hire an electrician, this isn't complicated. You can do this yourself. So all we need to be able to do is isolate one side of that bulb and put it to uh, the neutral side. One side of that bulb, we're going to put it to the load side. Uh, and that's all there is to it. That should be pretty straightforward. So don't follow the, the pattern of polarity in here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just, uh, we're going to take the offending ballast out. Uh, there's so much dirt in here, it's not even funny. I'm going to try to take these wires as long as I can, uh, because I noted when I did the fixture here yesterday, sometimes there just simply isn't enough wire in these things to make this all work. So just uh, savagely, I mean, again, I'm never putting ballast back in this thing. Once you've made that cut, you've found the, the point of no return. Now the rest of these I actually have to do above the bench. I'm not going to take them all off of the, uh, off the supports there to get that done. But, um, We have to actually. I got to release this one screw. I got to release one screw for the ballast. And I'll tell you what, it's dirty and gross enough up there. If I can't reach that one screw, those ballasts are going to be sitting there as literal ballast for the rest of their working lives. So here, this one is uh, was made January 2003. Uh, made in China, of course. It, so it's had a pretty good life, really. That's not bad. You know, that's. Uh, it gets cold here in the shop, and that's, I think, what kills these things dead faster than anything. So the twist tie of science here, we'll take that out. They all seem to have one of those. So now we need to just go, okay, where's our line in? So we trace that back. So we've got uh, the line in, uh, the electrical convention, again, just in case you're not 100% uh, up on this, uh, the stripey, the plugs... Now have a look at us, one of these three prong plugs, one side of them smooth, the other side striped. I'm going to have to go back and review this video later, I just know it because I, I forget this kind of detail almost instantly. Um, the striped one is uh, going to the white wire, 
Okay, so that's going to make it neutral. The one that's smooth is going to the black wire, okay, and that's going to make it load. All right, so now we're going to just trace that down. So that is trending its way all out here to the far nether reaches of that end. So if we just take the white wire here and we kind of unwrap and uncoil things and we follow it, let's see if this sort of makes sense. We've got only one line coming in. It comes into one side. These things are called tombstones. It comes into one side of the tombstone, okay, and then it loops to the other side of the tombstone, and they're both coming out on the other colored wire. So it's like white, white, and then red, and then uh, blue is coming out of there. So really what the instructions are asking us to do is, in essence, uh, put all that stuff together. So I really just need to tie this is already tied in, right? That's all the way back to the plug. I just need to tie those two things together. That's it. If I tie those two things together, that side has got that electrical connection settled. Uh, and then I need to come back to this side, and this is where I've got the uh, ketchup and mustard palette of lighting. So I've got the red wires, the yellow wires, I got a black wire, I got a blue wire. I'll uh, throw some more color out of China. Thanks, buds. Okay, so that's just a whole lot of nonsense. Doesn't make a whole ton of sense. But as long as those things are all connected, the light will turn on. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to connect this bundle on this side. Right, so we've got the uh, black wire coming in from the plug. Right, so that's the, uh, the black wire again is going to be our load. And the white wire is going to be our neutral. Uh, so we're going to connect those two wires over there, this bunch of wires over here, and that way the bypass uh, has been successfully made of the um, of the whole setup. Now, don't be silly. You're doing this wiring yourself in your own garage. There's lots of electrical fires and things that start every year, or people that are playing with this stuff. Um, wire nuts. Let's use wire nuts. In fact, I. I used to even tape those when I was back and a little bit more nervous. I don't do that anymore. I was actually told not to, but um, none of this is, is real super tricky, but you're just going to want to cut the wire. I'm going to save this wire, of course. You know, I, it might be good for something someday. No, I. some of these things are wired. Every single one I've opened up so far has been different. Uh, and sometimes I need to patch it in because the electrical connections like this wire here especially isn't going all the way down to the end there, looping it around and through and I haven't been able to make that uh, connection as easily. Now, the, uh, and the orange ones are, I don't know, they're a little bit big for doing this. I'm going to see just for two of these wires. These are only 16 gauge uh, if uh, my efforts from yesterday or anything. I had to check that. The old Eyeballs, make sure I know what I'm doing. I'm going to put it in the wrong hole. Okay, so two of those things together. We're going to uh, always do them first just with a pair of pliers. Just real gently. You don't want to be putting tight turns into this stuff. But I like to know that my connections are made. So I'm going to very neatly and as tidily as I can, I'm going to put those together. Um, actually, that is a really small orange, so that's that's going to work just perfect for that. And then I'm going to tie them on. Just keep going the same way. Always, I always go. Uh, what is that? Clockwise. Sure. <laughs> and, and then tuck it neatly away. That side's been connected. We're going to do this in real time, folks. See how fast we can go. It's not about speed. It's not about speed. Okay. So then these ones here, I just need to cut them all. They're all going to be of a random length and I want them to sit somewhere within the uh, grand scheme of things here. So I'll just cut those off. Lots of spare wire for doing the rest of these. Again, black wire coming in. Ground's already attached so no reason to fret about that. Strip them off. 
Now whenever I got to make a connection with, in this case, five wires, in fact, I'm, I know there's an easier way to do this. I don't actually have to connect all of these, but you know what? No one's charging me out by the job here. In my garage, I get paid by the hour, so if I take a little more time, who cares? Okay, so to do these ones, again, no, no special trick, and I am a little retentive, so I am going to put the yellows together just for fun. But I'm just going to start uh, by putting together in pairs. I just find if I try to roll these things together as a set of five, that I need other sets of hands that I don't possess. So I'm going to put a set of three and a set of two together. Um, you know, I don't know if this is offensive to electricians. If it is, keep it to yourself. If it isn't, well, let me know. I've never had this go wrong. That's what they always say, just before it goes wrong, right? Anyways, I tie those together nicely. Then I'm going to put all of them together thusly. Just going to give these a quick turn here. Remember, we're never going to use a wire nut in a car. Uh, we have no trouble using a wire nut in a connection like this. Now, when you're putting that many together, uh, you're going to need a bigger wire nut, right? So, stick that in until she's good and tight. Don't ever want that to come out. Set that back in. Just quickly uh, have a check. It's a lot less stuff in there than it used to be. Cover goes back on. Reverse directions on the drill. Let's just throw those back in. Without too much care, because this has to get screwed back on the ceiling, so. I'm only putting that in for your benefit. Uh, and then we're going to add in our bulbs just to check it. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more... Oh, I got light! She doesn't weigh anything now. Okay, so this is how they ship. So you've got a little protector at the end, which is ever so nice. And here's the bulb itself. So there's uh, actually two of these. Holder. So we'll grab another one. Not going to put all the bulbs in yet, so just saving all the end pieces because I'm going to put all these away as soon as I'm done talking to you. Okay, so the ends, these are just little protectors that come with. They come off. Slide those into the tombstones, rotate them up. Easy peasy. I only have to do this about 10 more times today. And just like a miracle, oh my god, give me some sunglasses. Okay, so that worked just fine. Um, hey. I'm hoping you're enjoying this video so far. I'm, I'm having a fun time uh, making it because this is way easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, let's get going on the rest of it. No time uh, to be talking to you. I'm just going to go and rip on it, get it finished. Okay, well, <clears throat> here we are. We are now finished the lighting project. Yay, let there be light. <clears throat> I'm really not too sure how well the video is going to actually pick this up. Uh, so we will go to the uh, Instruments of Science and <laughs> actually measure things. Uh, so back on the bench, right, remember we did this before with the vintage light meter. And if we have a look, what we had before was around 12, 12 and a half, so we pegged there. So we now, if I get that in there right, around 14. Uh, down the side of the car was uh, was a dark dungeon before. Now I added in the one the one fixture there. 
So this was the darkest spot in the garage. And it's, uh, it's now pegging the low end scale. So uh, it's now like 13.75. That's very good, very good. We continue over here. I put the uh, I put the four uh, four four foot fixture in over top of the welding table. All right again, we're around 14, so the light's very even in here now. And then finally here, this is sort of the dark corner now. It's still, yeah, well, 13 and almost a, a little bit over a half. So that's actually very good. Uh, I'm extremely happy with how this all turned out. I'm just gonna set my light meter down. Really the only issue that we had with all of the lights was with the eight footers. So up here in the bay, higher up, we've got the eight foot bulbs in pretty standard fittings. Now again, too sure how well this is all gonna show up, but hopefully it shows up well enough. The bulbs are, are sort of flexible. So right here through the middle part, they were sagging, which meant that they didn't make good contact with the tombstones and they weren't lighting all the way across. So all I did was I just took a little bit of aluminum tube, some rope, and tied them up in the middle. Uh, it's a little cheesy, but hey, it worked. So that's a wrap on this project. And really, you know, the biggest thing is I can now see the dirt. Uh, so I've spent quite a bit of time cleaning. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt. But even in the car, like, no word of a lie, like, just in through the windows in the car, I can see so much stuff in here now. I never could see before. A little hint is I've been working. All right, as you see that. Okay. That's enough for this. So if you were uh, thinking at all about putting LED lights in your garage, I can tell you the quality of the light is extraordinary. Um, the amount of light is, is really good. Um, anyway, I'm super happy. It, it, did, it wasn't cheap, uh, but it, uh, it was good. All right, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, all, all 20 of you.